Hi, today I'm going to talk with you about why it's important to measure your pulse rate during photosyntonics or light therapy, how you can do that, and then lastly, when to know is it safe that you can actually stop measuring your pulse rate. Now before I get into that, I'm Dr. Julie Steinauer and this is my clinic, Vision for Life and Success. If you'd like to connect with us and you're local, call us at 618-288-1489. If you're not local, go to our website, visionforlifeworks.com. You have two choices there. You can either schedule a consultation, which I highly recommend if you're just ready to take that next step, or you can tool around, read some of our success stories, read a little bit about some of the things that we treat with our clinic and take a quiz. Now let's go back and talk about why is it important to measure your pulse while you're doing photosyntonics or light therapy. Well, first of all, I'm going to admit a big mistake. And this happens with us doctors a lot of times where we talk about something and we make it sound so simplistic and easy, almost too simplistic and easy, that it makes it sound like you can do just anything you want with it and that there's no potential for any negative reactions or repercussions. So a word of caution, syntonics light therapy or photo light therapy is super powerful. I'm gonna show you in just a minute a couple of these filters but it's extremely powerful in the way that it affects our brain is it changes our brain wave patterns. It also changes certain areas within our brain like our pituitary and our hypothalamus. And it triggers something called the autonomic nervous system, which is the system that runs our whole body. It's split into kind of two sections, the sympathetic and the parasympathetic. Now, before you think this is gonna to get too techy tech, I'm just gonna describe a little bit about each one. I won't go into tons of details, but I'm talking about them in terms of how they affect your heart and your pulse rate. So the sympathetic system will cause your heart and your pulse rate to increase. The parasympathetic is gonna do the opposite. It's going to actually decrease your pulse and your heart rate. So why is this important? Why are we talking about this on a light therapy video? Well, the filters that we use, again, trigger your autonomic nervous system. So they do trigger the sympathetic and the parasympathetic. I'm gonna give you an example. One of the filters that we use is a red-based filter. And if you can see this, which I hope you can, so I'm shining this light here, it's kind of a red color. That's going to trigger your sympathetic nervous system, which can have the potential to increase your resting pulse rate or your heart rate. On the opposite end is the parasympathetic system. And colors that are kind of on the blue spectrum will tend to increase or trigger that parasympathetic system. Now the parasympathetic, remember, is going to drop the resting pulse rate or drop the heart rate. So why do you need to measure that when you're doing the syntonic light therapy protocol we've given you? Well, Again, we're triggering the sympathetic or the parasympathetic system in some cases. So you want to measure your resting pulse rate before you get started with your filters. After you finish with the filter, and then if you have another filter after that, you're going to kind of test it at the end of that one. The reason why, we want to see, does your pulse rate stay stable or does it increase or decrease erratically where we might need to alter something. So before I talk about that part, let's discuss how you can take your pulse. Now there are two methods that are pretty easy to use, although I favor one over the other. I'm gonna show you just briefly. You're gonna take two fingers, kind of feel right next to your throat, your windpipe, so to speak. Right around in here, you'll find your carotid artery, okay? Don't mash it or smash it, but lightly place your two fingers up against it and just feel along there until you can feel that pulsing. When you feel that pulsing, you want to start measuring your pulse rate. So for every pulsation, one, two, three, four, you're gonna count those for 30 seconds. So put a timer on. At the end of 30 seconds, you're gonna see what that was and multiply it by two. The reason why is there's 60 seconds in one minute. So we want your resting pulse rate for one minute. And then again, you're going to remeasure that, like you're measuring it at the front, you're measuring it after the filter. If you have another one, you're gonna measure after that filter. The reason why is we want to establish again, a baseline of where is your pulse and what do these filters do to you? 
Now I mentioned that there's another place that you can test your pulse and that's gonna be on your wrist. Although I think this one is a little bit more tricky, but you're gonna take three fingers this time. And if we kind of look, it's about right in here. You're gonna have to go over kind of an artery right in your, um, right in your wrist in order to feel that pulsation. And you would do the same thing. Make sure you never use your thumb in either location because your thumb actually, you'll feel your pulse rate in your thumb. That's why you wanna use these other fingers, two for here, three for on the wrist. If you've not done this frequently or don't really know how to do it, I still think the best and easiest way is to find it on your neck over your carotid artery. But once we establish is your pulse a certain, you know, in a certain parameter, then we know is it increasing or decreasing. So let's talk for just a minute about what is considered to be like a normal pulse rate. Most people, this is gonna be somewhere between 60 to 100 pulses or beats within a minute. Now that changes based on whether you're male, female, how old you are. So you do wanna maybe, if you're not comfortable or, or familiar with it, Google and see what's normal for your age range and for whether or not you're a boy or a girl. And what we're gonna do then is you'll be able to establish what's kind of normal for your system. Once you have established that, and we can see maybe after the first three or four times that you've used the filters, so maybe three or four days in succession in a row, and you can say, oh, my pulse rate really didn't change all that much. Then it's okay to actually stop and not continue to check your pulse rate each time. It's telling you, you're okay, your autonomic nervous system is not you know, um, in, affected in a negative way. Now, what would be a negative way that would be an effect on the pulse rate? Well, let's say that your initial starting off pulse is 60, and after the filters, it jumped up to 110. If it jumps or fluctuates up or down within 10 to 20, that's normal and that's really not too much of a problem. But if it goes 30, 40, 50, one way or another, on the upper end, if it jumps higher, you're gonna feel anxious, nervous, jittery. On the other end, you'll end up feeling lethargic, tired, lack of energy. That anxious, jittery feeling is because it's throwing you into a sympathetic, autonomic nervous system response where your pulse is increasing a lot. And on the other end, if you feel kind of lethargic, sleepy, like you're gonna just drop out, that's where you're being triggered on the parasympathetic side and it's dropping your pulse too low. So we don't want large sweeping uh, fluctuations. We want it to stay fairly consistent. Again, once we establish that, you don't have to continue to monitor your pulse. Now let's say that we kind of get rid of one filter and now we're changing it up and telling you take on another filter and use this new filter. We'll go through the process again. So now that you've got a new filter, start taking your pulse again just to ensure that with that new filter you stay fairly stable and no wide sweeping changes, um, again affecting your sympathetic or parasympathetic nervous system. And that's pretty much it. That's how and why you take your pulse. Now, if you'd like to connect with us, you can call us at 618-288-1489. If you're happening upon this channel and you've never seen this before, go watch some of my other videos. And if you find that you want to connect with us to schedule a consultation, go to our website at visionforlifeworks.com. If you're not local, you can schedule a consultation. Just click a button and it will take you through that process. You can also just read around on there, read our success stories, see what we do, see some of the things about what we've put on our website and uh, get more comfortable with us and even take a quiz. Now, if you like the video, hit the like button. If you haven't done so already, please hit that subscribe so that you get notifications for all of our videos. Thank you.